You know, one of the saddest things about working in the field of what's considered alternative medicine or the alternative to the norm is sometimes how easy something is to treat for someone that has a different perspective, even when the person has been to all the supposed experts in conventional medicine. And I'm not making a promise or a claim that everything that's so difficult to treat is easy for me or the mentors and doctors I learned from or from some other alternative practitioner. But I think a lot about what people think of as incurable illness or an illness that there is no solution for. And I thought in this video here today in my clinic, I thought I would talk about this idea that I don't believe there is any incurable illness. What's up you guys, Dr. Hein here. I've been thinking a lot about medical anthropology or even just the history of medicine. And it's interesting because I was watching this great documentary or this great movie called The Physician about Avicenna I believe he was a Persian physician and quite famous at his time and still quite famous. I mean, he's still known today. One thing in this movie that was really the illness of the time was what was called the side sickness. And the side sickness was appendicitis. Back then, you know, in the Middle Ages, very serious killer of people and there was no cure, no effective treatment that would save even a substantial number of people from the side sickness. And what prompted this one young boy to become a physician was that he saw his mother die of the side sickness. You know, the initial scene in the movie is she's sweating, she's feverish, she has this crushing lower abdominal pain. And they say it's the side sickness and she dies. And so he wants to, he develops this love of medicine. And what's interesting now is that obviously appendicitis is still an emergent condition, meaning you need to go to the hospital pronto uh, for acute appendicitis. And it's still serious, but it's successfully treated with surgery and the modern emergency medicine that we're so grateful for. But this is very similar to another famous Chinese medicine physician named Li Dongyuan. Li Dongyuan was a famous founder of what's called the spleen and stomach school. And a lot of his formulas reflect the illness and the problems of those times where there was a lot of starvation and war and famine. And Li Dongyuan's mom died similarly, where Li Dongyuan's mom, I don't know what she had, but she saw the great physicians of the times she died and it traumatized this young boy to the point where he dedicated his life to becoming a great physician. Now, he was also wealthy enough to the point where he could afford to do that, uh, to study all day and just pursue that without worrying about a job. But I saw so many similarities in these stories and it made me just think about the progression of human history where we had infectious disease have always been the big killers of human beings. You know, the risk really in ancient times was infant mortality, and infectious disease were two of the big killers that modern humans and the developed nations don't have to worry about so much. So you know, we have effective vaccinations for things like polio or measles, and these were really, really serious throughout history. You know, you read biographies of a lot of famous people in the previous centuries, they're all talking about, you know, Johnny got tuberculosis and died, Jill got tuberculosis and died. I mean, people were dropping like flies from infectious disease that we don't even bat an eye about today. Those were major killers throughout all of human history. And now we don't even worry about them in the developed world. We have different concerns now, right? Every generation, every era of human history has things that are going well, things that are going not well. Right now, humans are not living through major world wars. We're not, most of us, not living through in developed countries, infectious disease that could kill you. And what we are dealing with are diseases of civilization and diseases of wealth, right? Easily available food, high calories, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, things like that. But no matter what you've been given your diagnosis, no matter what somebody has said to you, I don't believe there's ever an incurable illness or incurable disease. Because you can look at the previous millennia of human history to know that that's not true. And that we will always be both chasing some solution to some illness and new illnesses will be coming. Many new illnesses will even come from our medical interventions like the overuse of antibiotics, while we will also cure other illnesses through antibiotics. But no matter what it is you've been diagnosed with, no matter what your conventional physician says, it doesn't matter if they're Ivy League trained, they are the specialist, the de facto expert. I don't believe there's ever an incurable disease. The chances may be slim, and maybe right now that person may not have the skill or our medicine may not have the skill, but one day it will. And so if you're the person who's been very discouraged by hearing some advice from your physician that that's all we have, get another opinion. 
get a third opinion, get a fifth opinion, because there are always other options that can help you. There's always a way and there's always a path. We may not have it now, but one day somebody will. So that's my uh, impassioned rant for the day. Um, I don't believe that really, you know, especially having seen in my private practice, the kinds of conditions people say that their doctor says is um, hopeless and then mentors of mine have treated. I just, my box is much bigger. My world is much bigger than that of someone who's in conventional medicine. So I don't know who needed this pep talk today, but I did it for you. Keep in mind that there's always a path and there's always a way. So if you don't like the advice you've been getting or it's you've been told there's no help, there's no hope, go find another opinion. All right, you guys, so that's my little um, end of the day clinic rant. But if you'd like to follow along and get weekly videos about Chinese medicine and how it can help you heal, check out the link below this video, which is for a free guide for daily rituals that can possibly help you add years to your life with Chinese medicine. And if you want to become a patient of mine locally or online via telemedicine, there's a link below to my private practice and my clinic contact. Please subscribe and share this video.